So a cloud chamber is basically a laboratory device that allows us to simulate the conditions in the atmosphere. How do liquid clouds turn into ice clouds? How fast do things fall out of clouds as precipitation, for example? How do chemical reactions, how do pollutants get taken up inside of clouds and processed? So these are all things that we would like to understand in more detail. This particular chamber is our effort to dial up a piece of cloud anywhere from the surface of the Earth to the top of the troposphere, which depending on where you are uh, on the surface of the Earth is anywhere from 8 to 15 or 20 kilometers. Obviously you can go to the clouds, which that requires expensive things like airplanes or you know, helicopters or rockets, you know, ways to get to the clouds and make measurements. The other way is to build a computer model. And the third way, which is what we're doing here, is to build, basically uh, simulate or reproduce the conditions that would happen inside of a cloud uh, in the laboratory. We're very excited about the chamber because there are, um, to my knowledge, no other chambers uh, in the U.S. where um, we can study some of the aqueous phase chemistry in droplets. Having a suspended microreactor um, allows us to have much more realistic uh, chemical conditions than we would have in a beaker. At this moment, there's only one chamber that does both clouds and turbulence in a reproducible fashion. I mean, what it does is it lines out a whole series of potential experiments uh, for this. It could take many years, but which is relevant to problems like the recent problems in 2010 in Iceland with uh, that volcanic ash that went over the Europe and closed many airports. When volcanic ash goes into the atmosphere, it eventually drifts up to flight levels where jet aircraft go, and it's dangerous for them. So you think about the construction industry, agriculture, uh, aviation, transportation. These are all parts of the U.S. economy that are directly impacted by our ability to make detailed forecasts of whether it's going to be rain or snow and, or ice. Should I reroute aircraft? Should I get my de-icing equipment out onto the airport runway and get it prepared? We cannot make a tornado, I don't think. A Michigan Tech mechanical engineering alum was basically the engineer who handled all the details and all the overview of the construction of this chamber. We've done all the different pieces of this, but we've never done it quite in this configuration and we've never done a differential heat where you have the hot and the cold plates running and the walls running all at different temperatures. So how do you predict whether that's going to be a rainstorm tonight, an ice storm, or a snowstorm? And how do you know whether it's going to be a foot or an inch or you know two feet, whatever? Those are all quantitative things that we want to be able to answer. That means you can't just say, well, there's going to be a storm. We want to have quantitative answers. And that means you need computer models. That means you have people making detailed calculations to try to, to say what's going to happen. Uh, and that means you have to understand every little process that's going on in those clouds. 